the title is quite long. We decided to have a shorter one in, in, that is here. So the presentation will be split into three uh, parts. Uh, I will introduce the problem, talking about uh, a, a real history about, of uh, non-interoperable IoT standard, uh, IoT data. Then I give the floor. I will give the floor to my colleague Luca, that will. Uh, explain the solution that we identified based on the Sensor Things API standard. And then we will conclude uh, uh, by presenting a real uh, application in a medium-sized city uh, in Italy called Ferrara. Before starting, but you can also switch off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So before starting, may I ask you to raise your hands for the first question. So, are you familiar with QJS? Yeah. Are you familiar with uh, IoT data, Internet of Things data? And are you familiar with uh, Sensor Things API standard? Okay. So, we will spend a few words explaining uh, something that uh, you may already know. So, the problem. Uh, we start from here, Ferrara, that is a medium size located in the Po Valley, that is one of the most polluted area, areas in, in Europe. And uh, when we started a couple of years ago to work on air quality data, the first thing that we did was to basically search for air quality data in those uh, four regions over there, Piemonte, Lombardia, Emilia Romagna, and Veneto. And what, is, what we discovered was that uh, Piemonte was uh, already making available uh, air quality data with this uh, structure without any uh, power, um, public available uh, APIs. Lombardia was providing uh, the same uh, uh, encoded data in CSV formats uh, but with a, a different structure, with a different model. Uh, through uh, Socrata uh, API. Socrata, Socrata is the uh, solution identified by Lombardia for the open data portal. Emilia Romagna, a different data structure, a different data model for providing the same uh, information, the same data about uh, PM10, PM2.5, NO2, and so on. While uh, Veneto region was not and still not uh, uh, making uh, their own uh, data available. So, what uh, we uh, explained to the municipality of Ferrara that was that we definitely needed uh, a, a solution for making all these data interoperable by ingesting them into uh, a sensor things API server. So, I leave the floor to Luca that will explain the solution. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. So the solution that we found was a, an existing standard um, uh, just designed to collect, to store, to, to handle sensor data. So time series data, uh, so uh, also sensor data, which are time series data. And this is an OGC standard, and uh, it's currently uh, covering the aspect of sensing, so of actually um, the, um, uh, gathering, collecting data, measuring data from the environment. It will in, in the future uh, also cover the, the tasking part, so how to uh, communicate um, orders to the sensors in a standard way. Like if you have a camera, a camera could be a sensor, it actually takes pictures, takes videos, and uh, you, you might want to control it, to, to tilt it. That, that would be a, a tasking uh, activity that's not currently covered in the standard. But for the purposes of our problem, we were just uh, concerned about uh, the measurements, so the sensing part, and that is covered by the standard. So. Uh, I'm aware you will not be able to read the uh, data model, the schema, but I will try to describe it briefly. Um, this is the, the, the way the, uh, the information about time series data 
is organized in the uh, by the standard, and it's it's quite uh, it's not that complicated. It's it's uh, it's quite it's quite reasonable. It there's um, one two three four five six seven main entities, and they all they, they, each of them. Um, has a, has, a, has a specific meaning. Like, let, let's keep in mind this example. Let's say we want to collect data uh, from a drone that's serving a relief along a route to retrieve a measurement like the IP spectral reflectance. And so, how do we how do we model the data that this drone is is collecting? Well, first of all, there's the, the an entity called Thing which is the thing part of the <laughs> Internet of Things, uh, which is the object of the physical world that actually um, capable, is capable of being identified and integrated into communication networks. So it's the, it's the drone itself in this case. It's the, the, phys the thing of the physical world that carries the sensor that then collects the measurements. And it's the thing that is connected to the Internet and then makes it, makes it, uh, it, makes it possible for us to actually uh, receive the data. So that is the thing. The drone is, is the thing. Then, there is another entity that, that is called location, that quite obviously is the, loca the geographical location of the thing. So it's the position of the drone in the, in the example. Um, it, it, uh, th this entity can cover the cases of a fixed sensor, or the case of a moving sensor like the drone. Uh, in case of a fixed sensor, the, the, the information is just the, the coordinates of the fixed position that, that stays in, in this uh, table here. While if it is a moving one, then there's uh, an additional table that basically just uh, tells for each moment in time what is the position of the moving thing. So very, very simple, very straightforward. Then. Again, there is another entity that's the sensor that describes, uh, that allows the, uh, the, the user of the system to describe the details of the sensors that's being carried. So in, in the case of the drone, the, the, the camera collecting the, the reflectance. Of course, one thing, the drone could be carrying more than one sensor. separated by the entity sensor. They are not the same thing. <laughs> then there's another entity called observed property, and that, that describes the physical observable, the thing that is being, the, the, the property that is being observed. So the reflectance in this case. Again, there could be one thing, the drone, that has one sensor, that collects more than one information. It could collect. It could be collecting the reflectance and the air temperature. So that would the, the reflectance and the air temperature would be two different observed properties. Then there is the so-called data stream, the entity named data stream. Yeah, good that it's written in with a bigger font there. Uh, that is. Uh, the main entity, the most important one, or at least the central one, as you can see in the, also in the organization of the of the schema, because it's it's the one that links all the other ones. Um, a data stream is a single um, uh, time series with a specific uh, uh, observed property collected by a specific sensor uh, related to a specific thing. It's, that is not the entity collecting the measurements by itself. It's just the like the header, the metadata. That that's the that represents the whole of the time series of of uh, reflectance data in this case collected by the reflectance sensor from the from the drone. The, me the real measurements, so the the information couple, the timestamp, and the measured value sits in this other entity here, which is called observations. Quite a reasonable name. And then, we are almost done. There's this other entity called feature of interest. That's, uh, uh, that's uh, the way uh, to describe the um, geographical element that's being observed. Uh, 
which is different from the geographical position of the thing that observes it. Let me uh, give you an example. In the case of the drone, the location is the, uh, the, the, the root of the drone up in the air, while the surface, the, the surface, surface below is the feature of interest that is being observed by the drone. Well, actually by the sensor on board the drone. Then, really this is the last one, um, the, the first version of the standard uh, was evolved to, um, to create uh, an additional entity which is called multi-data stream, which is just an evolution of the data stream uh, that, that handles um, time series that have uh, not just one measurement per timestamp, but a vector of measurements uh, uh, related to a single timestamp. And that uh, serves the purpose of uh, sensors that collect more than one observed property at the same time. So not to duplicate, to create um, more than one uh, data stream when uh, they could all be packed into one single vector data stream. Okay, um, so the standard does not only describe the way um, to structure the, the measurements, the sensor's measurements, but also it, it prescribes how this information has to be um, accessed. So it, it, descri it, 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 it describes a way, a, sem a semantic a language to access uh, through an API uh, to the information, and it provides all uh, all those uh, parameter, parameters to be used in a request, which closely resembles a, a, like an SQL que uh, query to access to the data. So um, it, it, it describes how to build an API to access data with filters, ability to count, ability to order the elements, to select just specific in specific parameters and etc. Of course, I won't be reading all the and describing all the commands, but the idea is that to show you that the standards covers also this part, not just how to store the data, but how to access it. And why is it a good thing to have a standard? It's good because it provides a, a, a flexible data model. You can you use it for sensors data, but it could be used for generically for time series data, and of course for any kind of, of sensor. It's an open technology, so uh, if lots of people use it, then uh, it, it allows, it, it creates interoperability. It's an international standard, so it's not, it doesn't come out of the idea of a single person or a single company or entity, but it's based, it, it puts together good ideas from many peoples. And, well, of course, it's, light and extensible, and it has different levels, supports different levels of details. So let's run to the application. Um, we have been working in uh, two different projects on the city of Ferrara on the topic on, of collecting air quality data, outdoor air quality data. One of them is um, air brake, and the other one is usage. They are one follows the other, and both working on the topic of air quality. Uh, in the city of Ferrara, a medium-sized city in Italy, we have three different types of sensors. The official ones from the local, the regional environmental agency. Uh, they cost tens of thousands of euros, but they are very accurate and reliable, but there's few of them. Then there's professional, professional, and, and averagely costly, like a thousand of euros, sensors that have been uh, bought and installed by the project. They are reliable, but not as uh, those are, as the official are. And then we have plenty of low-cost uh, citizen-assembled sensors. They cost exactly 180 euro each, so much less than the others, but they are they provide less accurate measurements. But we have access to air quality measurements from all of the three uh, types. Then, what, what did we do? We, this is the simple architecture that we implemented. We, had, we have sensors, I've just shown them. Then we 
uh, we uh, uh, used a, an actual a real implementation of the uh, Sensor Things uh, API, and the implementation name is Frost. Uh, it's made by the Fraunhofer Institute uh, and applies the standard. And we, are, we have used Apache NiFi to populate the, uh, the database that's behind it. And then we, we uh, used it to, um, uh, to publish the data and to connect different types of interfaces to the, to the um, database. That's just a screenshot of, uh, of NiFi. And that's uh, more details about the uh, Frost server, so the implementation of the Sensor Things API standard. And then let me give you the floor to my colleague. So, thanks. So, apart from uh, reusing an existing open source solution that is uh, Frost by the Fraunhofer Institute, we implemented uh, a QJS plugin for enabling uh, QJS users to access uh, standard APIs providing dynamic data. And the plugin is uh, already available in the repository uh, of uh, QGIS plugins. Here we have some screenshots. Uh, I encourage you to just to download uh, the, the plugin and try yourself by connecting this uh, uh, endpoint over there that is providing uh, near real time uh, air quality data of almost 5,000 monitoring stations uh, all over Europe. These uh, uh, data are coming from the European uh, Environmental Agency, and the endpoint is published by the Fraunhofer Institute itself. So you can do like this. These are just the mass of uh, uh, locations uh, all over Europe. And for instance, if we zoom in uh, in the area of uh, Bari, Italy, and click uh, on, uh, on a specific uh, station, we can uh, get uh, the observations here yeah. and uh, we can uh, of course browse also uh, diagrams and download data in CSV format. Then we decided also to provide the air quality data in the case of, uh, of Ferrara to non-skilled uh, people, so to people that are not technicians, that are not JS users. So what uh, we did was to just to have uh, a simple web page that can be accessed also by mobile. And you have something like this. The, this it is built uh, upon uh, a JavaScript library called uh, Particle.js providing hourly updated uh, information about the air quality index, also at a single air quality station level. In this case, uh, we have the trend in the last uh, 24 hours. And of course, uh, uh, the single um, situation uh, at single um, uh, component level. All these data are also put by the municipality in the open data portal. So all these data are not uh, just for uh, viewing but also for uh, downloading and reusing the at the moment uh, there, there are uh, uh, the uh, hourly updated uh, views uh, served by GeoServer uh, containing the last uh, 168 hours so the last seven days of each single parameter and that's it thanks mm -hmm.